What's happening guys? Welcome back to another cash game review session. Today we've got a friend, I'm my own pet, playing 10 Russian cash on GG Poker. If you enjoy the videos guys, please make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. Big shout out to everyone over on Twitch, we hit 10,000 followers, so the next goal is 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. It'll take two seconds, just click the little FTO watermark in the bottom right hand corner. And enjoy the video chaps, and I will see you in the next one. Anyway, let's uh, let's play some hands. Well, I appreciate it nonetheless, Adam. Heat check, go and suck your own dick. Right, with three betting ace three suited, with three betting king queen suited, eight big blind seems reasonable. Uh, I don't mind going. I, I go seven point five in these spots. I think even seven is fine. I don't think it makes too much of a difference. All right, we take down the king queen. We're gonna go for a c bet here. I think this is pretty fine, both theoretically and like you know just generally um i think we probably want like bigger bets you know not necessarily small bets on this board really good for us we still have like you know all the overpairs pocket tens we've got some 10x and stuff so yeah i'm okay with this wouldn't hate a check back but i think betting is absolutely fine seems pretty reasonable oh right, defend ace five versus button which seems pretty reasonable i think gto wizard will three bet this at a frequency and i can't imagine we want to do much folding versus the small size I do think, though, if we start raising every single time we have the Ace of Hearts, then we're going to be doing way too much bluffing overall. So I'm not really sure about this. For example, like, you know, I always talk about, like, our best bluffs. Our best bluffs on this flop are going to be hands like Queen-10 suited, 10-8 suited of Hearts, because we have, you know, a shitload of equity, but Queen high or 10 high. Then it's going to be, you know, not flush draws, like Ace-5 suited, Ace-10 suited. Even then, we, we, you know, we're going to want some hands like King-Queen with the King of Hearts, Queen-10 with the Queen of Hearts. Even hands like Ace-10 with the Ace of Hearts is better because we have backdoor straight draws as well as blocking some more potential top pairs. So I think if we're check-raising this all the time, we're going to be check-raising way too much. Um, if you think they're going to see back their entire range for a third and fold a lot, I'm a bit more okay with it. But I think you need to be careful about how often you're check-raising in spots like this. Uh, a7, we open blind on blind. I don't mind checking this flop. I don't mind. I guess just, like, betting small is probably fine. Like, I think I think at these stakes against, like, especially if you think this pool is pretty tight. Honestly, I think just betting a third with a lot of hands. I think a load of people, like, over C bet one third, but I think it still works. Like, even though people over C bet one third, you can still over C bet one third and still get away with it. The idea is that, like, you know, when we bet small, we'll do it on board so it puts their range in a spot. So they have to continue quite wide. So let's say on a king eight deuce rainbow, we're c betting a third with our entire range. If like we're c betting our range on that ball because it's good for us, but they have to continue any pair, most ace highs, and anything with like reasonable backdoors. If people aren't continuing those, and more importantly, they're not check raising at a high enough frequency, then we don't get punished for c betting a third. So we can just do it all the fucking time. Uh, queen ten suited, I think three betting. I want to see this if it does it full frequency because I folded king queen suited in this position before. Yeah, it does PR continue, actually. And then versus button, it'll PR continue as well, right? Yeah, so mainly just three button. Yeah, so 11 big blinds, I think this is pretty reasonable size. Yeah, you're definitely on the more aggressive side, which uh, is kind of weird because I don't really play that aggressive, right? Like, so even though all of these are like GTO, like, you know, Ashak is going to three bet a frequency. I think that you could either just call all the time or three bet all the time. And because EV is the same in a GTO sense, it's going to be fine, at least, you know, from a game theory point of view. I have always, when I've been playing, when I used to play years ago, I used to up the aggression because people really didn't know how to handle aggression. Now people do a bit more, so I've calmed down a lot. So I'm not really that, that much of an aggressor and I'm much more a blue line player where I'm trying to exploit people's tendencies for overcalling um, and then under bluffing rather than exploiting their tendencies for overfolding, if that makes sense. Obviously, this is fine, and as long as you're, you know, sticking within reasonably that like the confines of like GTO, you'll be fine going either way. I'm just noticing you're going to be much more aggressive than me, so I don't know. We're going to have different views on exactly how we want to play and such. Uh, Queen ten suited, really shitty flop to be honest. I'm probably just going a third with range rather than a bit less than a quarter. But again, if you think people are overfolding, then fine um checking the turn almost always ace jack really annoying that like he's gone this tiny size but ace jack is just a fucking shite hand to play 8.5 this is so tempting but i think calling is uh i think folding is the best play so i'm basically always going to check this queen turn there is some merit to bet for value but i think in general it's too thin we're just banking on them calling draws which we don't really know what we're doing against 
I'm gonna check call this turn and potentially even fucking call the river. Check check and again, what is the what's the purple tag? There there are some opponents I would bet big here against absolute belugas. There are a lot of opponents I would check here, but I don't mind betting small if you think like I think a lot of his king acts. We block king queen, which is one of his best hands. I guess he could have like ace turn. If you think he's a whale, I don't mind betting small. I think betting small, honestly, betting one third here. In saying that, maybe it's better to let him blast if you think he's going to bluff and just check and allow him to blast all kinds of shit. But in, in which case, I'm, I'm checking to check call always. Yeah, I'll be check calling then. Check, check. And sixes. So the thing is, though, the sixes, I mean, sixes actually can call on that flop, but it might want to bet turn and river. But maybe once in a while, especially when you bet small, he might call that hand. Uh, Tanja, we defend. Uh, check call and flop which I think is pretty reasonable. So I wouldn't hate a check raise. Again, if you think people are going to just oversee about here. Um, but an ace-king high board is not really good for us. We don't have aces, we don't have kings, we don't have ace-king, stuff like that. Honestly, on this turn, we could maybe like check raise or like... I, I, no, I don't think we want to do this. Yeah, I don't think we want to do this with this hand. What are you trying to target here? Like, specifically, what, what do you think is going to happen here when you overbet? Explain to me exactly why you're overbetting. Fold from a king, some asex, because no one bluffs. No one river bluffs, so they give you credit. Bollocks. No, they don't. Mate, believe me. Nobody fucking bluffs at most pools, but they still don't give you credit. It's so frustrating. So nobody bluffs, but they love hero calling. Right. Um, I actually agree with Zissem, which is the only reason I didn't time you out, you little dick. But I think that check shoving is actually probably better. Or check raising is better. So... The reason I don't like this, particularly, is I don't think Asex is going to fold. So, alright, I, I spoke about this earlier. Characteristics of a good bluff. One, you want to block their strong hands. Two, you want to unblock their folding hands, their weaker hands. And three, you want to be quite low down in your range. This blocks strong hands, but I don't think it's all that relevant. Why is that? Because we don't, I don't think he's going to show up with flushes. don't think he's going to show up with two pair or pocket tens. Like ace 10, king 10, or 10s. And I, I don't think he's going to show up with queen jack. So even though this is an amazing hand in terms of blockers that we block a lot of stuff, I don't really think it's all that relevant. We are not like the lowest down in our range we could be. I think this is the absolute cusp of what you'd want to bluff. And But I prefer check raising here because I'm going to check raise some flushes and I'm going to check raise a straight every now and then, right? So I think this makes a pretty good hand to check raise bluff because then we do block his strongest hand. The only problem with this is I don't think people are going to fold ace a lot, right? I just don't think they do, because once you've checked the turn and then you've bet the river really big, I don't think they're going to want to fold it. So it's weird to see. Like, I wouldn't have hated a check raise. I don't mind the fact that you called, but I think this is just like, it's not bad. It's not bad. What do you mean he's barreling ASEX? He shouldn't be barreling his ASEX. Shut up. Simmer down for a minute. I just think it's a little bit too aggressive because, right, think of it like this. If your bluffs, if you're targeting a very specific portion of their range, then your bluff might not be good. For example, if you're only targeting King X, it's not that good for two reasons. One, you're only targeting King X, right? Which is a very small portion of his range. Two, he might not play King X like this, right? Is he really going to see back King Queen on the flop to check the turn? Or is he going to just check back the flop quite often? So I think that you're targeting too narrow of a range to be using over bet bluffs here when you have showdown. I think he's just going to go check, check, and you're going to win a lot. Especially if you're against somebody that's, you know, he's going to check all his King X and you'll lose, but... You can't win every single part in poker. You can't just be like, okay, well, I think you might have a king. I'm going to get him to fold or I'm going to get him to fold top pair. You'll have to be against specific opponents to be able to overbat and target those top pairs and know that they're going to fold those hands. For example, as a guy that folded two pair versus my three quarters bet when I was betting a worse hand for value, I was betting a top pair and he folded two pair and, and showed it. Now that guy, I'm just going to relentlessly bluff. But yeah, I think this is just a little bit loose. Considering how, how quickly he folded, you probably had the best hand. Hey, Sammy, good three bets. Bolden's fine, I guess, but I think I'd rather three bet here. I, in fact, I'd much rather three bet button versus cutoff with ace 10 than I would small blind versus hijack. Honestly, just three betting in position is way better because you're not going to get four bet anywhere near the amount you should. So, hijack versus small blind. Small blind was supposed to three bet ace jack, let's say, what's that, 30% 30, 30 of the time? One, like a third of the time? Button versus cutoff was supposed to three bet 75% of the time. Three betting in position, if you think people are tight, is way better because people will call you a lot rather than four bet, both in position and out of position. I'd rather be in position in a three bet pot with ace 10 off than be out of position in a three bet pot with ace jack off. 
Ace Queen, we open under the gun. Um, I don't. I like check raising here. I think and just trying to get all the money in because the board can run out really unfavorable. Uh, what happened in the splash bar? Eight six. What happened? Did we just take it? Someone opened or some shit? Nah, nah, nah. I I think that you have to wait here. Like you have to wait here with eight six off because if if everyone folds or whatever, first of all you can steal, but secondly, like if it goes call fold fold, you're getting twelve to one on a call. I think you just have to limp this hand, um, and try and see a flop just because you're getting such a ridiculous price. Not an ideal hand or an ideal spot, but I, I would uh, I would do that. Anyway, yeah, here I think I want to check raise because against this stack with someone playing sixty percent VPIP, we can try and get the money in the top pair because you'll call a shitload and then we can just shove turn. Versus, it depends on versus position. Probably like 25% against early position. I think versus button, it does it a lot more. Uh, and then just bet, bet, shove in there. Yeah, yeah. There's a little bit of argument to check. But you might see even like King Jack just call this off. What the fuck? So if I have like Ace-10, or Ace-5, or Ace-6, I'm going to check call. Because... We need him to bluff. Whereas here, we can still get called by ace-8, ace-jack. Uh, ace-10. And we have the kicker that wins. But when we're chopping against the ace-x, shoving's pointless. So we need to check to allow bluffs. So I'm okay with this. This is actually the worst hand I would shove here. Ace-queen. Like, by far the worst hand that I would shove. I, I'd never shove ace-10 in a million years. So yeah. I, either way, it goes in. Because if you check, he shoves, you snap. But it's not about the fact that he had jacks. This is what some people say, you know. They're like, they'll put, they used to post hands like that in the Discord and be like, well, how, how, where do I get away from it? It's like, you don't. But it's not about getting away from it. It's about making sure that you maximize your EV in the hand, theoretically, right? I wouldn't say doesn't 3-bet jack-jack. Although, fair enough, because it is, is, his VPIP's super high and his PFR's really low and his 3-bet zero. You can kind of tell that. Just put, just like, notes like that are a bit shit because, like, you know, just something like this is better, so... Flat jack jack button versus cutoff because positions are important, right? They're super important because you know jack should never flat button versus cutoff, but button versus under the gun, it can flat at a frequency, right? Big blind versus under the gun, it basically pure flats in GTO sense. We go for the check, which I don't hate. I think I just prefer aces. I I think I just prefer betting. I think my king x will check back a shitload. King jack, we can check back. Even king queen, ace king and aces. I'm just betting. The main reason I'm betting aces is because we completely unblock King X, right? So, like, King Queen is less likely he's going to have a King, but, like, aces, he can have, like, more combos of King X. So, I think I always bet aces. And I get what you're doing. I think part of the reason people check back is, though, they're a little bit scared, like, because, you know, you get check raised and they bet the turn and it's a bit annoying. But I, st I think just aces just wants to bet here. And now you see a really shit river, which is dumb. And if he checks, we have to check back. Uh, and when he does that, we just pure fold. Like, this is the thing, though. Think about it. Like, you don't need to call this unless you, you know this person is going to be uh, quite trigger happy because we can have hands like pocket eights and we can have a load of king x. If we check back a load of king x, yeah. Now, against certain opponents, this would be bad. But, like, we unblock, like, jack nine and queen jack. But, like, we can have so many king x and, yeah, people are fucking walnut in these pools. So, honestly, I'm fine with this fold with aces. And the good thing is it, you're happy to fold aces, which, uh, you know... I think theoretically you'll be overfolding, but it doesn't matter in tighter pools. But I think that like a lot of newer players and weaker players struggle with folding aces, even when they know they're beat because it's aces. So it's kind of good to see that you're uh, that you're willing to fold the. I like it. I say it's not hand I'm three betting, but like I know you're just gonna try and punish everybody. I think it's reasonable. I like that fold versus a three x with eights when we're MP. I think that's uh, very good to do. Let's see you just blast off with ace eight. Okay. I don't think I would have liked this as a triple anyway. I think doubling a lot and, you know, just getting everything but King X to fold. Yeah, uh, I don't think we can really bet for value. I think we just have to check back. Yeah. And I think it's kind of tempting to go for a really small bet because I hand wants a bit of protection and stuff. But, like, I don't think there's much merit in betting, to be honest. So I'm just checking back and probably calling on Brick Rivers, depending on what I think of the opponent. Um, The Heart River is a bit shitty. And it's one of those now where I think that Villain will bluff a reasonable amount. Ugh, such a dumb size. Probably just folding. We're getting a good price, but like... What are they going to have? Are they really even going to bluff Ace Queen? And we block that anyway, so... Yeah, against an unknown, just folding. But I'm not 3-bang Ace-8 anyway. And again, against the, the smaller um, 
size. We're getting a better price on a call, so we can just call this. Now, if he three axes, I actually much prefer a three bet than when he raises two point three x, just because we're getting a better price on a call. I think ace eight just is just happily pure calls. Uh, again, I'm not normally three betting this, but if you think people massively overfold, then I'm okay with it. But again, be wary that that under the gun range is going to be a lot tighter than it should be. Pretty sketchy either way. I kind of uh, the thing is I've not seen you get punished yet. There you go, get in the fucking bin. That's the problem. You can't just three bat like somebody because they're they're really tight if they're opening three x under the gun. Because if they're really tight and they're three xing under the gun, what the fuck do you think that range consists of? Strong hands. A stronger range than most, so you're three betting into a range that is actually stronger than it should be. You're just three betting everything, aren't you, for the fucking sake of it? Again, it's hard for me to to, to gauge when the thing is sevens doesn't really play that well post flop because we get loads of spots like this. This is kind of just button clicking. It doesn't really work for value. It doesn't really work as a bluff. There's loads of hands you can call with that's worse that just have like really good equity against us. Turn completely bricks. Now we have no idea what we're doing. Check folding doesn't feel good. Check calling doesn't feel good. Betting definitely isn't good. Now there's argument to call because we unblock all of his bluffs. Queen, Jack, King, Queen, and any floats. But to improve, we only have two out, so we kind of have to fold. So it's one of those where, like, this is why I don't like three batting sevens. At the end of the day, we're now playing a bloated pot out of position. Now we're going to check and fold when he shoves, and or we're going to check. and ex It's either going to go check, check, and we probably fucking lose. Or it goes check, bat, and we fold. It wouldn't surprise me if you call this. And then I, I kind of hope you call and lose because then it's so fucking unnecessary. Right, okay. I don't think this is the worst call in the world because we block the nuts and we unblock queen, jack, and king, queen. The problem is you think that everybody's really tight here. And if you've just lost a full buy-in here, it's so unnecessary. Like, we're just bluff catching with a hand we don't really need to bluff catch with. Yes, we unblock their um, calling range. Uh, we unblock their bluffing range, at least. But if you think people aren't really bluffing, then it's just unnecessary. You're probably going to end up getting shown Queen Jack and look like a fucking genius. But I think this whole hand's pretty unnecessary, really. Like, I don't think we needed to do any of this. So I'm kind of hoping he's just got pocket nines. Thing is, he doesn't really have that much for value because I don't think Ace-10 will shove. So we're looking at, like, pocket nines and, like, Ace-5 suited, 5-6 suited, and there's not that many combos. Something I will say, and this might be well off in this hand, I'm kind of hoping it's not, but, like, with the really small bet on the turn and then the shove on the river, I think you'll find a lot of people end up nutted like that. They bet really small on the turn to keep a lot of hands in when they're super nutted. So they have something like uh, pocket tens, pocket nines, or a five or something like that. So I'm kind of hoping we see one of those nutted hands, um, and then this has been totally unnecessary, this whole hand. And obviously he's got ace three and you look like a fucking genius. It's just tilting because like there's just fucking there's no need for all of that. And you're saying that nobody bluffs and shit, and then you just call down with a pocket sevens, been correct and look like a fucking genius. But it's just like it's one of those where like this isn't going to be profitable in the long run, man. Congratulations, you found a guy fucking literally clicking buttons. He should just fold on the flop, turn back. He should just probably bet bigger because his range wants to bet bigger. That's value. And then he doesn't want to ever shove that. So, like, just tag him as a fucking agtard and then move on. But, like, so annoying, man. It's just, like, one of those where it's just, like, you've just clicked a load of buttons not really knowing what you're doing uh, and then managed to win a fucking buy-in from it and you look like an absolute fucking genius. No, don't say things like this. I know people are joking, but, like, you guys are just being like, oh, yeah, I know you're the best, aren't they? But, like, people... This is old-school ego poker where people love hero calling and stuff like that. The thing is, it's so fucking glamorized. Like, there's so many people that, like, glamorize it on Twitter and stuff. And it's like, oh, yeah, look, look at this sick call with 10 high. And it's like, yeah, look at this long time losing call. Like, when somebody calls with 10 high or they call with something like that and then they lose, you look like an idiot and then everybody moves past it. But when, like, they're right, those one in fucking 20 times, you look like an absolute king. Uh, tons what's going on here. Three bat. Uh, we, we can have bigger bats on this flop texture. I don't mind betting turn and then really hoping we don't get raised. I might actually bat fold turn here. Um, river, if it's gone check check, yeah, on the left, definitely batting river with queen turn. Okay, well, obviously we can't do anything but check fold on the right now. Uh, he'll dunk shove his flushes and it's so hard for him to not have a flush when... Now you just you can't shove this tens. Wait, you're not gonna wait because it's too it's four to a straight. 
What the fuck is this? I'm my own pet. Is this a value better or a bluff? What is this? What is this? Jesus, you've really taken a shit here. Are you, are you value betting or bluffing? You need to be very, very clear what you're doing in spots like this. This is absolutely terrible. This is just a button click, man. You've done fine here. When you run a river, right, flop and turn, you can bluff, semi-bluff, whatever. Generally speaking, you have two value. You, you have two type of bets. You have value bets and you have bluffs, right? Semi-bluffs, um, equity denial or protection sort of things. On the river, there's no such thing as a semi-bluff. There's no such thing as equity denial. So on the river, you have two bets. Value, bluff. When you value bet, the idea of a value bet is you need to get called by a worse hand. When you bluff, the idea is you need to get a better hand to fold. You have just gone all in without thinking of any of that shit. Why is this just skipped? Oh, you got called. Uh, I don't know what I've got called with. I swear to God, if he calls with a worse hand, I am done. I am absolutely fucking done. Why have you gone all in? Explain your thought process for going all in. Like, what it was then, what it is now, whatever. Regardless of whether it's good or not, I need to know what's going through your mind to go all in with this pocket tans hand. I need to know what's going on in your mind. Because this shows a real, like, the, the video's been fine up until now where this just shows a complete lack of, of fundamentals. He has ace for sure. No, he doesn't have ace for sure. Shut up. He could have sixes. He could have five, six. He could have a shitload of flushes. Even if there's no logic, logical reason behind going all in, is it because the board is eight high and you have an overpair and you feel like you need to go all in? So, like I said, if you're value betting, right, let, let's talk about value betting. I, I need to, like, write this down or some shit, right? So, like, value bet. So the idea of a value bet, right? We are trying, so let, 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 let's talk about all in. So let's say we're always, we're only going all in. Right, so let's say we're just going all in on the river, right? We've got about a pot size bet. We're going all in or we're checking, right? So our only size is all in, right? Which solvers will have sometimes. So let's say a value bet. We are trying to get a worse hand to call, right? And then a bluff. We are trying to get a better hand to fold. So what we need to do when we're value betting is we need to be targeting a range of hands that are worse than pocket tens that are going to call on the river. Do you think I'm your pet? I, I, I'm my own pet. Do you think that... He, what hands do you think he's going to call an all-in with that's worse than pocket tens? So, like, what worse hands call? This is what you should be asking yourself. There's basically none on this board. Exactly. So you actually have to look at the board here. There is two, three, four, five. That's four to a straight and three to a flush. Right? So even if I had aces here, I probably don't shove. Because, like, no, aces I might shove. But, like, kings we don't shove because we, we can't be sure that Jax is even going to call a river bet. So what worse hands call? Probably none, right? So can we value bet? No, right? If no worse hands can call, it's not a value bet. So we are trying to get a better hand to fold if we are bluffing. So then we've got to ask ourselves, what better hands fold? Now, there might be some better hands that fold here. Can you name any better hands that fold? The thing is, you can't just shove and then go to this kind of like logic of like, oh, is it a value better or bluff? You need to have this in your head and you need to be thinking about this on the river. So what better hands fold? Queen, queen or jack, jack? That's possible. That is possible, right? But a couple of things. If we look at GTO Wizard, well, let's have a look at GTO Wizard here. So the cutoff opens, we threw back the button, and it folds back to the cutoff. Jax is pure four betting. Queens is pure four betting, meaning he shouldn't have these hands. Let's say he has pocket jacks sometimes. That's six combos of pocket jacks, right? Sets aren't going to fold. They're probably not going to take this line. Um, maybe deuces, but even that probably won't fold. But sets generally won't take this line. Let's say pocket twos. In any case, let's say it's only jacks and twos. So can we bluff? This is what I talked about before when I was saying, what was the hand? When, when you overbet with the 10 jack on the ace, king, seven, 10, something, three clubs with 10 jack with the 10 of clubs, 
we overbat, and I didn't think it was a good bluff. I didn't think it was a good bluff because we are specifically trying to target a very specific portion of his range when we bluff. That's what we'd be doing here if we bluffed this, right? We'd be specific, targeting too specific of a range. So basically, we can't really value bat and we can't really bluff, right? So let's see, think about hands that would value bat. So I'm my own pet. What hands do you think we could have that would value bat here? I'm my own pet. Give me some examples of hands that we would take this line with as well. You have to, you have to be sure that we're going to have these hands in this line because we're three bet preflop. So flush and ace. Okay, so let's say king, queen of spades. Let's say maybe ace, king with the ace of spades. So those hands we can shove for value, yeah? Probably can't even shove a set for value. Exactly, you would check a set. And then, so what hands do we want to bluff it? God, it's actually fucking hard to find bluffs, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe tens has to bluff. <laughs> so what hands can we bluff here? Fucking hell, it's actually really hands, really hard to find bluffs. But what hands can we shove as a bluff? Something like, I don't know, like if you were going to take this line, king, queen offsuit with the king of spades. It's really hard to have bluffs. Maybe we fucking want to bluff tens. Do we bet Toma King Queen suited? Probably not, but it's not the point, Carlos. We could theoretically maybe have these kind of hands. But I just want to make sure that I'm my own pet understands that we can, like, when we when we have value hands, we're going to want to have a straight or a flush. And when we have bluffs, we're going to want to have not a lot. Honest to God, I wonder what we have. Let's, let me fucking run this. Surely tens doesn't bluff. <laughs> tens might bluff. <laughs> like, you never know. <laughs> um, so cut off versus button. Eight, four, three. So this will probably be bigger than the smaller size yet yeah, does. So let's say it goes 50%, which it will do with pocket tens and villain calls. It might do a lot of checking on the turn, to be honest, because the turn is not that great. So yeah, actually cut off gets the lead here, theoretically. Um, tens is mainly checking here, to be honest, but it's got some big bets for 75% and villain calls. And then the river, what was the river? The two of spades? You won't look like a genius anyway. Even if it does, yeah, it just never bluffs this hand. So what, what are bluffs here? Let me actually have a look. I'm just curious myself, really. Okay, so it's got hands like King, Queen of Hearts, King, Queen with a spade, obviously King, Jack with a spade. Okay, so it does have some nonsense. Sevens, it actually turns into a bluff because it has more EV, which makes sense, but we're not going to go that deep into, uh, into strategy. I'm more talking about considering how low, we, low down we are in our range. Like, yeah, there's just no shot because when we shove here, what does he fold? He folds 45% of range, which involves some fucking nonsense like 8-9 suited. <laughs> Actually calls it a frequency with 8-9 suited. <laughs> anyway, can you understand my point here on my own pat? Like I want this is these are this is what I wanted to get into your head. That like we need to make sure that we actually consider. Like you're just shoving here, you're just all in because all in, right? I talk about like what a lot of fun players do. They just bet because bet. They're not considering are they trying to value bet or are they trying to bluff? And this is why I say to people, you should go down and play one table a lot because you need to actually consider what hands you're going to get called by that are worse if you value betting or what hands that are going to fold if you bluff, right? And maybe he does fold pocket jacks, but he's not supposed to have jacks a lot. Maybe he does fold pocket twos, but he probably, he probably might not even have two. So let's say what better hands can we fold? Probably none, right? So can we bluff? No. And then these kind of hands that we'd have as a bluff. So the solver's using hands like king, queen of hearts. Which, yeah, isn't a natural bluff on flop or turn, but at the end of the day, we're going to have king high and we're going to have a lot of straights here. So, yeah, this hand is, is really bad because it's shown a, a lack of, like, fundamental knowledge about why we go all in, right? You're not going all in for a specific reason on the river, and you need to, you need to know that. Anyway, let's see what we get called by. Pocket, fucking, pocket nines one time. Pocket nines with the nine of spades. I, I'm pretty sure he, he called quickly here, so. Yeah, yeah, so he's going to have a flush or... Pocket sixes, I think. Or oh, ace king, Jesus. So when you said, oh, maybe if he's in it, he's going to fold an ace, there's no shot he's going to fold an ace. And he, oh, I think it'll, theoretically his, his line might be okay. Well, no, he should fall about this, bro. But to try and get this into your head, and this should be going on in your head basically every single street, but especially on the river, right? Because on flop and turn and stuff like that, yeah, we can. You know, we can semi-bluff, for example, on this board, like on the flop especially, we could have a hand like King, Queen of Spades, and we don't need to think, oh yeah, are we trying to get a worse hand to call? Are we trying to get a better hand to fold? We're just pressing our equity. We have a lot of equity. If he has a hand like Pocket Tens, we are flipping against Pocket Tens. We might actually be slightly ahead. 
which means we're not necessarily bluffing or value betting yet we're just um we're semi bluffing so these are the main things that we need to bet then you've also got semi bluff and equity denial or protection like equity uh, equity denial or protection isn't a reason to bet necessarily on its own but it is something that we benefit from but these are completely irrelevant on the river right so the river you are only down to value bet or bluff it's as simple as that and you need to make sure yeah, you need to make sure that you're trying to... You need to make sure that you're thinking of that at all times. So that was a, that was a really bad hand. You absolutely fucking butchered it. And, and, and that, that, that's the thing. When, when I asked you, you know, is this a value better or bluff? So what went on in your head and you were like, nothing. Like, I didn't really have anything going on in my head. Like, you need to make sure things are going on in your head here. So let's say, for example, on this King-9 here, we've, we've seen about the flop and then... On the turn, if we're going to value bet, we need to make sure we're getting called by worse hands, right? If we're going to bluff, we need to make sure we get better hands to fold. We can't bluff a king because we need a better king or an ace to fold or a flush, which is never going to fold. So, and we probably can't value bet because he's going to have a lot of ace x and some flushes. So, therefore, we kind of have to check. Which we do. And then the river comes a bit of shit. Um, on the right hand side, we check flop. I'm probably just betting small with range on this board. Now here, we're semi bluffing because we've got a nut flush draw. We have the nut nothing though, so I don't mind check calling. But when we do bet, we might fold out some hands like sevens or pocket fives and stuff like that. And we have draw to a flush. And then we check about the king, um, king nine, which makes sense. So here on the ace river, I think this is thin, but I think we could maybe value bet. But probably for a small size. Don't mind checking, but it's so weird that you're checking this hand where you've got top two pair with the nut kicker, but then you went all in with tens. Like, it's so weird. I don't hate this. I think betting small. Oh my God. What a f hey, he's got the net tag. What a fucking stain. What a fucking stain. How are you calling King Nine suited to check back the flop, to flat the turn, and then check back the river? What's the point in playing? Just fuck off. Just fuck off back to Argentina and go and fucking play... One cent, two cent on Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> Get out of these pools, man. But yeah, it's so weird to me that you check this hand when there's 40 big blinds in the middle, but then you shove pocket hands. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Why did you check this river? Why do you think you checked the river? Because you don't think he could call with a worse hand? That's not unreasonable. But then you're all in with pocket hands, which just didn't make any sense whatsoever. So I'm glad that that, that, that was in this video, though. I'm glad that that hand was in this video. Because it's very important to showcase. What is this? Hang on a minute. Why have you just fucking replay, 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 replay? Why the fuck have you just three bet a six offsuit? What have you done this for, dickhead? Hey, dickhead. I know he's got the nit tag, but like, come on, man. This is just a bit too much. A six offsuit is a terrible hand. Maybe a five offsuit I'd allow because you've got like straight draws, but out of position we need to be tight because when we get called we're out of position and it's more difficult to play. So don't be doing this shit, right? I do this all the time. Well, just don't. Just three bet, like, hands that play better. Three bet ace-ten off pure. Three bet king-jack off pure. Three bet, like, suited uh, stuff like that. The thing is, you won't, you're won't. you not tracking this on my own pack. You're not tracking how often they fold. And then you're not tracking the reverse implied odds that you have, right? When, you, when it's ace-high board and you have to call two streets or you bet or whatever.